At first glance, ukulele seems like a dream come true for any fan of the retro 3D era. Colorful graphics, a crazy anthropomorphic lead character, catchy tunes, and an irresistible sense of fun pervade the landscape in ukulele. And to top it all off, you have Back to the Basics platforming once again, where the only main concern for players is hitting the jump button in time. Today we're going to go over the good, the bad, and the ugly with ukulele, and get you caught up on what you should know about this highly anticipated throwback to the golden age of platformers. The single greatest thing ukulele achieves is nostalgia. Remember rolling around in Donkey Kong 64 for the first time? Or how about flying through the sky in Banjo-Kazooie? Ukulele brings those warm, fuzzy feelings back to us, with an immersive playpen of diverse locations to explore, and of course, plenty of things to collect. But Playtonic isn't just relying on the past for this game, as many new features have been added to Ukulele to make it stand out from the shadow of those classic rare 3D games many of us have come to love. You've got power-ups like Fire Breath, Ice Resistance, and Water Breathing for that cute little chameleon Yuka. And Laylee, the bat, on the other hand, has a screech ability integral to puzzle solving. But Platonic has also added elements to the game that were present in other titles, such as minecart sections from Donkey Kong Country and boosts from Super Mario Galaxy 2. So when you combine these elements with a pretty cool hub area, charming characters, at times, and a 60 frames per second engine with a bright and colorful palette, Yuka does have some good things going for it. And yet, there are several foundational issues with the design of ukulele that we must go over that are keeping it from being considered a great game. First and foremost, the fact that the game lacks any sense of difficulty is a big fucking deal. Enemies that put up a good fight are few and far between, nor is there a wide variety of minions that would at least force players to utilize multiple gameplay tactics. Let's look at Banjo-Kazooie for an example of what I'm talking about here. In the first world, the very first world, soon after talking to Bottles, you encounter a mean, floating cabbage patch, followed by a giant, hopping onion. These are like the first enemies, and you gotta take them down differently. And this was just the first level, Yuka doesn't even go this far. Further compounding the issue is when you realize that Yuka only has five worlds outside the hub area, and that's not a huge amount of content. But even bigger than this is the simple notion that maybe we all have been just too wary to accept that perhaps these types of games simply haven't aged well. Let's think about this just for a second. What are some of the common criticisms leveled at modern day titles that market themselves on exploration? Number one, the world is just too barren of things to do, such as with Metal Gear Solid V. Number two, there are too many things to do or too many worthless tokens to collect, or petty things to do, such as with any Ubisoft game. Or three, the area opens up too slowly for players to really enjoy the world, like with past Zelda games prior to Breath of the Wild. Now let's look at games like Banjo-Kazooie and DK64 that pioneered that classic rare formula. There wasn't much to do in the world outside of running between one locale and the next while killing enemies along your way. Exploration was, though bolstered by one aspect, collectathons. As kids, I know a lot of us spent countless hours searching for those musical notes, honeycombs, and golden bananas. But as older players, these things can come across as kind of tedious, especially when it lacks the proper payoffs for investing so much time into those tasks. Because after all, let's remember that a lot of people don't want to be limited by random features like jiggies or puzzle pieces to abstain from exploring everything the developers have put on display. Now to the game's credit, Playtonic has actually subverted this latter problem by making every world in the game free for players to enter from the get-go, meaning you don't have to progress from one to the next in linear fashion. However, it still falls prey in the sense that the main thing to do in ukulele is to look around every nuke and cranny or bust every barrel you see for one single purpose, to collect items. Whether this is to acquire the game's currency or level-specific treasures, it feels like a step too far into the past that we left behind for a reason. Further compounding the issue is the fact that many of the worlds in ukulele are flat-out boring, lifeless, and flat. 
Finally, there are some basic technical issues, like the camera, which fails to properly make objects transparent when going around them, resulting in players having to manually move it, like we had to with Super Mario Sunshine, as well as the sound design for the game's NPCs, some of which who are so annoying that they may drive you so mad that you'll be begging for the pestering of Na'vi. Ukulele is not a bad game. It's once again another serviceable, okay experience with a $40 asking price. It's kind of a shame. Many people thought this game was going to bring back the classic platformer, but at the end of the rainbow, they should be warned. Ukulele might not be the game we all thought it was going to be. It's an example of two things, hype and archaic game design. Press outlets like IGN making statements like, why Ukulele is basically Banjo-Kazooie 3, get people disillusioned to the prospect of how games self-identify. Ukulele is inspired by Banjo-Kazooie. It's not trying to be Banjo-Kazooie 3. It lacks the charm and polish that made those platformers of yesteryear so endearing. And more importantly though, it simply exists in the wrong time period. Can platformers succeed in the age of modern day gaming? Or is Ukulele proof that these types of games should just stay in the past? You tell me in the comments. And thanks for watching guys, if you enjoyed the video, by all means hit the thumbs up button and subscribe here for more of our future content, and have yourself a kick-ass day.